Welcome to the Winging It Travel Podcast with me, James Hammond, where every Monday I'll be joined by a guest to talk about their travel stories, travel tips, backpacking advice, and so much more. Right now, I'm taking the podcast on the road traveling with me. So tune in every week for short form episodes detailing all my travels alongside my Monday guest episode. Are you a backpacker, traveler, gap year student, or simply someone who loves to travel? Then this is the podcast for you. This is a casual, informative podcast designed for you to inspire you to travel. There'll be stories to tell, tips to share, and experiences to inspire. Welcome to the show. Hey, yeah, just a quick one. I just want to say there are many ways to support this podcast. You can buy me a coffee and help support the podcast with $5. Or you can go to my merch store with the affiliate link with TeePublic, where there's plenty of merch available to buy, such as T-shirts, jumpers, hoodies, and also some children's clothing. Thirdly, which is free, you can also rate and review this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podchaser, or Good Pods. Also, you can find me on social media on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and TikTok. Simply just search for Winging It Travel Podcast, and you'll find me displaying all my social media content for traveling, podcast, and other stuff. Thank you. Hello, and welcome to this next solo installment of my travels. I'm going to cover... Ljubljana in Slovenia, Lake Bled in Slovenia, and also Zagreb in Croatia today. First of all, we had our trip from Venice to Ljubljana on the train. In total, it took around five hours because from Venice, you go via Trieste. And it was a pretty plain and easy journey, really, in the end. And we got to Ljubljana at sort of mid-afternoon and checked into a hostel called Most Hostel. And it's probably about 40 euros a night for two people. And I'll come to more about most in a bit. First impressions were pretty comfortable, although a bit weird because they don't have an actual reception. You have to go to next door to h to go hostel and they check you in and put you into your room. So this place was kind of weird. It had all the rooms of a hostel, but no common area, no management. You just literally go and stay there and there's people in other rooms. Slightly weird layout. And I noticed straight away there was creaky floorboards and I thought, ooh, if people start coming back late or even going to the toilet next to us because we had to share a toilet, that's going to wake me up. And that instantly got my attention. But anyway, checked in, uh, refreshed. We got out in the nice weather. It was sunny and took a walk down. There's basically a main river through Ljubljana. And first of all, there's a number of bridges to go and see. So we went and checked out one called Triple Bridge. And it's got obviously triple parts of the bridge. It goes over the water. One for each different type of thing over the years. One was for trade, one was for pedestrians, etc. And it goes on to a nice main square. And we just walked along where all the bars and cafes are along the river. And it's such a nice day that people are out having coffees and drinks. And it had a really nice feel about it. And Ljubljana just felt like this nice green city in the middle of Europe. And I just love the vibe. The lady checked us into the hostel said within two hours you could pretty much see central Ljubljana. And it felt like quickly that we're walking around all the streets and kind of seeing all the little squares and the bridges. But we stopped off for a coffee and a refresh at a cafe called Slaziska Pri Vojni Das. And quickly realised that Euro 20, Euro 50 is for the coffee price. So that's pretty decent. And we had a great little muffin in there and coffee. We wanted to make the most of the weather. So we walked around the old town and the streets until dinner. Basically just... All the old cobbled streets and little cafes, independent shops. You can see the castle on the top of the hill. And that was on our list, the Ljubljana Castle. But not that day because it's a bit too late. And again, you can see a funicular that goes up and down it. So that was on our list for things to do next time. Despite the train taking five hours and being comfortable, it does still take it out of you. So we a lovely little sit down at a park called Park Zvezda before dinner. It's right in town. And it's designed by a Slovenian architect, which was mentioned in this week's Slovenia episode with Noah Charney. And we just sat there and debated what to do for dinner. Now, kind of trying to keep to a budget here, and I'll come to budget at the end of the Euro trip, which is coming actually end of this week. And I'll tell you what our budget was. Um, so we decided to go to a local kebab place. And it's called Zezirada. And basically it was Turkish kebabs. So we had Emma had a veggie one, I had a chicken one. For a cheap price of five euros, you got an absolute plethora of food. Would highly recommend it. So after tucking in, we made our way back to the hostel and during the night the creaky floorboards came into effect and people walking around, I think someone came back at three, 
woke me up. So I instantly had a bad feeling about the hostel, even though the bed was comfortable and the room was actually quite nice. I just did not have a great feel about it. So naturally the next day, woke up feeling knackered, but we were planning our day in Ljubljana. First, I had to get out and meet Noah for the interview this week. And I was meeting them in Ljubljana, but in a different part of town. I actually had a bit of a dicky stomach, actually, maybe from the kebab, I'm not sure. Maybe the broken up sleep. But I had to make my way to the train station and get to an area called Ljubljana, a Vizmaj, which is about eight minutes on the train. Super easy. If you've got interrail pass, you can use it, so it's free. Got on the train successfully and met him at Burger Bar Bedenbreki Rezadiska. It was great to meet Noah, do the interview, hear about Slovenian as a whole, not just Ljubljana and Bled. Do a great interview and I released it this week, so go and check that one out. But this was the most random cafe in the most random part of town, but I loved it and Noah treated me to a burger. So thanks, dude. Appreciate that. Went to meet Emma afterwards at a cafe next door to the hostel. Um, she had some good breakfast there and we had to finalise a few bits of European travel plans. So we'd done that, then took a walk to the castle to get a view of the city. Another day in Europe and another funicular. So we've got a return journey. You can walk, of course. There's something about funiculars that I like. I'm not sure what it is. Got the funicular, it costs, it's super cheap, about three euros return. So we took the ride up to the castle, got up there, had a walk around at the top, um, which has got great views, kind of 360 views actually, around the edge of the castle and then around the back of it, there's a little walk to a little viewpoint. You can obviously pay to go into the castle, but we did not do that this time around because we just want the views and to sit there and kind of enjoy the day. We stopped in the calf because we noticed there's like, I don't know, 30 school children waiting for the funicular. And the funicular could have probably only fit maybe a third of those at a time. So we kind of realised it's going to take a bit of a while to get down unless you want to walk and you've got to wait, you've got to do something else. So we popped to the calf in the castle, which is really nice. And we ordered the bled cream cake and coffee. This bled cream cake was recommended by Noah that, that morning. And it's an absolute dream cake. It's just for the cream, sugar. I mean, what else do you want? Would highly recommend it. Then we wandered the streets in town, basically the streets we didn't do the other day. And got an Indian later at a place called Taste of India. And this guy kind of like orders as he goes. So he takes the order, cooks it there and then in front of you, gives it to you, next one. So it takes a while, but real fresh Indian food. That was absolutely brilliant to be fair. Another big walking day and lots covered. And again, we're just knackered. We're absolutely smashing in the steps in this trip so far. But the next day was Bled. So we had a plan to go and see Lake Bled for the day. And we're both really excited about that. Um, but weirdly, I woke up in the middle of the night before bled with a dodgy tooth. It was not ideal. About 3am again. A bit of pain. I was like, what the hell is this? Didn't need it because already I wasn't getting great sleep. And obviously there's some creaking the floorboards again in the hostel. So I wasn't 100% when I woke up. But more on that in the next episode. But essentially our plan was to walk to the bus station, which is right next to Ljubljana train station. You just need to walk towards it, take a left. It's just outside. There's a little booth there where someone serve, a couple of people serve you. And on a weekend, you can get a bus ticket to Bled for pretty much two euros ten. During the week, it's double the price, I think. So if you're looking to go to Bled, Saturday and Sunday is the cheapest time to go for a bus, but it's going to be busier, so you have to weigh that one up. We got a 9.30 bus at Terminal Stop 28 and it took an hour to get to Bled. And straight away, the weather was looking pretty cool on this day. Almost clear skies, a bit of cloud about, um, but we read that Bled's going to be pretty good on this day. And we just want the views, you know, the classic postcard views you see, and all the ones on Google that you see. Arrived in Bled, as it's suspected, a clear day pretty much. But before that, we stopped at Art Cafe to get a nice scrambled egg and a bit of toast and a coffee. And that was right by the water. would highly recommend that place. It looks very trendy. And the first stop was Bled Castle. So we walk up to Bled Castle. Again, you can go in and pay, I'm not sure how much that costs, probably around... 18 to 20 euros, something like that. And you get obviously the views of the lake and obviously going to the castle. But you can walk up towards the castle, around the castle, and another walking trail and see some views through the woods. And it's fantastic to get sort of a bird's eye view of the lake. But I think the castle will probably have one of the best views because it's right at the top. You can't get any higher than that. And the view looking out into Lake Bled with the island, I don't think would be rivaled unless you go at the other end of the lake and climb a viewpoint up there. So you want to pay to get that and also see the castle, that's worth doing. But you can still get some great views otherwise. But we walked down the trail and made our way back down towards the lake and decided to walk all the way around it, which is about six kilometres. And it really is a breathtaking view all the way around. I've got so many photos. And at the end of the lake, basically halfway point, 
and you look back, you've got the island to your right, you've got the castle to your left, and you've got the snow cut mountains in the background on a clear day like it was in that day. Unbelievable photos and videos. So I've got loads of those. You've seen them on social media. I'll probably put some more up uh, this week when I put more tips from Noah for Slovenia. Just an unreal place and a bit surreal. Got away round the lake to basically where we started and we wanted to take a boat to the little island. Now, first of all, you need cash. And we didn't have enough cash, but there's an ATM or a couple of ATMs in town where the boats go from. So go to ATM, get your cash out. And we decided to get the electric boat, which costs 14 euros. And it takes about 10 minutes to go across the lake from there to the island. They drop you off. And then an hour later, they pick you up and take you back. And that's 14 euros. And on the island, visit the church, which costs to go in about 10 euros, I think. And there's a nice little cafe on there, which does like traditional Slovenian food and drink only. So no Coca-Colas and stuff like that. So we got a nice bit of Slovenian cake called Potica. And we got the tarragon flavour, and that was absolutely sensational. Definitely worth recommending it for a local Slovenian cake. I think Noah recommended that as well. We got a drink and sat in the sunshine and mind the views. Brilliant. Starts to get a bit cold though. So we got the boat back to the mainland and then got the bus back to Ljubljana with one minute to spare. That's pretty good. My tooth was annoying me as well, which wasn't great on this day, but... We did have a great time in Bled, great views, would highly recommend it. I would actually would probably stay there for a few nights, so you're not rushed to do all the things around it. I'd probably do one of the big trails. But I think this time of year, it probably would have been covered in snow by the looks of it. Uh, but in the summer, good to go. And next morning, packed up and left really early to go and get our 8.30 train to Zagreb. Now, a bit of advice here. The 8.30 train to Zagreb from Ljubljana train station on your Interrail app will say NA for reservation. But when it says reservation, it probably means you need one. And we weren't sure about this. So we popped to the train station and the lady there told, no, you can just get on. It's absolutely fine. So what you need to do is add it to your Interrail pass and just get on the train at 8.30. They turn up every day for that train to Zagreb. I think it comes from Germany. So people do book on and reserve from there. But for Ljubljana, you just jump on the train and it takes about two and a half to three hours to get to Zagreb. Got to Zagreb and obviously what's going to check in early but we couldn't do that so going to drop our bags off our hostel called Centre Guest House we had to meet the owner Dinko's colleague who was cleaning the rooms and stuff at midday but we got in about 10.30 so we went to a local brunch breakfast place called Figa Garden which is basically basic next door and we had a Croatian bagel with Mediterranean dips and that was absolutely sensational and the server in there gave us some tips on what to see in Zagreb um, so that all combined two coffees and that food was probably about 12, 13 euros. And then we dropped our bags off to go and see Zagreb. Just a bit of a tick box exercise. Seeing the cathedral, that was the first thing. And Zagreb was really nice to walk around. Sunny day, quite busy as well. A bit surprisingly nice. I wasn't sure what to expect of Zagreb. And walked around some parks, sat in the park next to the cathedral. And we smashed in a serious amount of steps before checking in around two o'clock, which was basically a room amongst other rooms in this building in Zagreb. And Dinko was a really nice guy, helped us check in. We had an unbelievably big room and the bed was so, so comfy on the main street. Own bathroom, even had our own hobs. So we're a bit excited about that. So we got some food at Spa to cook in the evening, to some knock-ins some broccoli. It's absolutely heaving for some broccoli. And we're just feeling a bit knackered this day, super hungry all day. One of those days, just eat, 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 eat. We walked a load of steps up to that point and we just wanted to chill out in the afternoon and cook our own dinner. And we didn't actually go out in the evening, just chilled out in the bed. The bed was so nice. It's just so good to sit in there and lay in it. And my tooth was getting bad at this point, so I started looking to dentists in Budapest. As I said, I'll come to more details in the next episode of that. Next day, we were seeing Zagreb before our train to Budapest, which was in the evening, sort of late afternoon, evening at 4.30. So we had a whole day in Zagreb. The night's sleep was amazing in that bed. The first bit of admin on this day was taking our bags to the train station because they have lockers at Zagreb train station. Great if you want to drop them off and see Zagreb for a day, and then get a train in the evening. Now, arrived, lockers, all of them were not in use. So I went to the information desk, and the lady behind said we can leave them at her desk behind the window through this locked door. Not the most secure place, but we've done it anyway, and it's free. And we got bags back at the end of the day, so that was definitely worth doing. Not sure why the lockers are not working. And we got out into Zagreb on another great day. It was even warmer this day, 18, 19 degrees, and we went to a place called Melt, which is uh, in central Zagreb. And they do brunches there. Had a great full English, they call it, for their breakfast there for nine euros. 
It's super trendy place as well, very popular. And on this Monday, kind of booked out, as in like, there's no seats available. And everyone was having coffees, drinks in the morning of Monday. I don't know if anyone was working that day. Not sure what was going on. Then we made our way to an area called Capitol, which is definitely worth going to see. It's like the old town and nice little buildings each around a couple of streets, some cafes, some bars. And we made our way to Grit's Tunnel, which is near there. And you can walk through these tunnels in Zagreb for free and they kind of connect to different parts of town. Definitely worth going to see. We did have a coffee outside at a bar called Oliver Twist. Bar, not trendy, just one of those main touristy ones on that street in the old town. But imagine in the evening, or on a weekend in the evening, that'd be pretty heaving down that street. But a nice little area, and great to walk around in the day. Lots of parks and old stuff to go and see. And we made our way to a park, up to a little viewpoint of Zagreb. And that was a great little find. And again, there was a funicular if you want to go and get that. We didn't know that was there. We just walked from the tunnel up to the park, saw Zagreb, and looked over for a bit and chilled out on the bench. That was really nice in the sun, and the view was sensational. Then I had a coffee stop next for the Trendy Coffee podcast called Cogito Coffee Shop. They're quite a popular place in Zagreb. Got a few locations around town. One was near our hostel. One was near where we were at that point, and I got a recording done, and they serve great light coffee. It's kind of sat back amongst the main street really nice to go and have a coffee in there and then for the rest of the afternoon we just sat in the park called now my creation's not going to be great here Trug TRG Klalja Tomislava and it's right outside the train station with a fountain can't miss it sat there in the sun before our train to Budapest so that's kind of the rough itinerary for a couple of days there Ljubljana and Zagreb both places are probably and countries I probably want to go back to um, different parts to go and see and Ljubljana is a great place to base yourself. You want to go see Slovenia, of course. And Zagreb, obviously, it's the capital of Croatia, but they've got the whole coast down there, which I've not seen before. So both are countries I want to go back to. And Zagreb was a nice, unexpected surprise. I really liked the feel of the place. Great to walk around. Great weather. Viewpoints, tunnels. Great coffee. Just a really nice place to base yourself for a few days for a city break. Would highly recommend it. And next will be probably my last of the Europe portion of this trip. It's going to be my time here in Budapest and Vienna, which is next. I'm traveling there today as I speak. And that will wrap up the Europe portion of my travels. And then I'll do a summary with all the stats, maps and graphs and everything about it to give you an idea how much we spent, what we've done, steps, prices, all that sort of stuff. Looking forward to that. And I've got some cool stats lined up for you. Thanks for tuning in. And I'll catch you next time. Cheers.